Welcome back to my channel. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Dee Dee, and I post weekly vlogs and travel vlogs, and now I'm kind of dipping my toe into booktube. We'll see how it goes. But I'm here to share my October TBR, even though it's kind of late in the game, halfway through October already. But these are the books that I plan to read for October and have started most of them already. So please support my channel by commenting, liking, and subscribing, and hit that notification button so that you can get updates. As far as books go, my favorite genres are thrillers, cozy mysteries, rom-com, and I do like some historical fiction, but I read pretty widely. Um, I read a little something from everything. I've been in a bit of a reading slump the past year, but these are 12 books. It was 10, but now it's 12 books I hope to at least get kind of into, if not completely finished by the end of October. I'm biting off more than I can chew probably, but what is life without its challenges? That being said, I am late getting to this TBR video, but let's go ahead and get into it with book number one. To start things off, I am starting with an audiobook. This is my in-person book clubs, book club selection, and because I commute 35 to 45 minutes both ways every day, audiobooks have been kind of a game changer for me. So this one is called How Moon Fuentes Fell in Love with the Universe. It is by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland, I think is how you say her name. And it is about a girl who's, she has a twin sister. Her twin sister is um, a kind of Insta-famous, but it's like a fake Instagram. And she ends up going on a road trip with her to act as her camera woman. So she feels like kind of the ugly outcast sister. And she ends up meeting like a grumpy guy named Santiago something. And, um, it's a YA book, kind of a rom-com. So I am a rom-com girl. I don't read a whole lot of YA unless I'm forced to. So this would be an example of being forced to. Book number two on my October TBR is Midnight on Beacon Street by Emily Ruth Verona. And I actually saw this book on, so this is a last minute edition. I saw this book on another video or somewhere online. And it's giving like 80s, vibes, the description I read was giving very much the adventures in babysitting, starting Elizabeth Shoe, if you're an 80s kid like I am. Um, so that's what appealed to me. And it was also just gave okay, that like spooky, like creepy feel that I like in my thrillers and in my horror books for October. So Midnight on Beacon Street will probably be high on my list because it is a library book and you know, limited time. And I'm sure other people will be wanting to read it as well. So it'll probably get returned before I'm finished with it. But book number three also gives those kind of spooky, scary vibes for October. It's called Victorian Psycho by Virginia Fietto, I think is how you say her name. I got this one on NetGalley. So this one actually doesn't come out until February of 2025. So um, I do have the description here for you. So it says, Winifred Naughty arrives at Enser House prepared to play the perfect Victorian governess. She'll dutifully tutor her charges, Drusilla and Andrew, tell them bedtime stories, and only joke about eating children. But the longer Winifred spends within the estate's jury confines, and the more she learns of the perversions and pathetic preoccupations of the Pounds family, the more trouble she has sticking to her plan. Whether creeping across the moonlit lawns in her undergarments or gently tormenting the house staff, Winifred struggles at every turn to stifle the horrid compulsions of her past. This sounds so up my alley. When her chillingly dark imagination breaches the feeble boundary of reality on Christmas morning, Winifred is finally ready to deliver on her generous gifts. Wielding her signature sardonic wit and penchant for the gorgeously macabre, Virginia Fietto returns with a vengeance in Victorian Psycho. I'm not familiar with this author. I've never heard of her. And I don't think, I don't think I've ever read anything by her. I usually remember author's names. But that's book number three. I'm really excited about that. I have started it, um, but wasn't able to really like focus. I think I've read like maybe a chapter so far. Okay, book number four has been all over Instagram, Bookstagram, Book Talk, everything. And it's called The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. And I've read that it gives Gilmore Girls vibes, which I think makes her name even more appropriate. But um, it is, from what I understand, kind of a rom com slash mystery, and that it has some spice not just pumpkin spice, if you know what I mean. 
So this says, a spicy small town romance and TikTok phenomenon, perfect for fans of Hannah Grace and Stephanie Archer. I'm not familiar with either of those authors. But when Jeannie's aunt gives her the beloved pumpkin spice cafe in the small town of Dream Harbor, Jeannie jumps at the chance for a fresh start away from her very dull desk job. Logan is a local farmer who, Logan is another Gilmore Girls reference. Um, who avoids Dream Harbor's gossip at all costs, but Jeannie's arrival disrupts Logan's routine and he wants nothing to do with the an irritatingly upbeat new girl, except that he finds himself inexplicably drawn to her, as one does. So will Jeannie's happy-go-lucky attitude win over the grumpy but gorgeous Logan or has a city girl found the one person in town who won't fall for her charm or her pumpkin spice lattes? So that's the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. And I know there's some other books that have already come out in this series. This book, I, I wanna say it's been out for a couple of years because I remember seeing it before, but it's like really blown up, it seems like, this fall. So number five on the list is Pumpkin Spice and Poltergeist by Allie K. Mumford. And this is another one I found online. I think it was like in a sapphic book group on Facebook, but it is a sapphic romance, supernatural romance. And it is um, taking, it's the first book in a new series. Oh, it was actually by Allie K. Mumford and K. L. Morrison. So there's two authors, so my bad. But um, this is the first Maple Hollow book, it says. This just came out, because I remember seeing it. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. And it says, the last, last thing Apothecary Witch Jordan had on her mind was romance, but when she got witchy wasted, she cracked open the coffin of her love life and conjured the ghost of her ex-girlfriend. Jordan is in, a, in for a spell of trouble now that the snarky specter is determined to haunt her until she finds someone new. Enter Harlow, the new girl in town who just wants a job in her sister's cafe, but she discovers that the spooky town of Maple Hollow is more than just a gimmick. Real magic lives here, but after running into with vampires and one too many gray cafe blunders, she's ready to hop on a broomstick and fly out of town. Okay. Puns. So, um, as sparks fly in Cauldron's bubble, will this unlikely pair brew up a love potion that defies the ghostly odds? It sounds so cheesy and you know, I'm a sucker for a sapphic romance anyway, but you throw some ghosts in there, I'm, I'm down. My kind of book. Number six is A Dark and Drowning Tide by Allison Saft. And this is a sapphic YA fantasy. I got this on NetGalley, but it's already been released. And I'm not a huge fantasy reader. I'm very picky about my fantasy, but, but the cover, because I do judge books by their cover, like lent itself to kind of spooky October season thing. So the description says that Lorelai Caskell, a folklorist with a quick temper and an even quicker wit, is on an expedition with six eccentric nobles in search of a fabled spring. The magical spring promises untold power which the king wants to harness to secure his reign of the embattled country of Brunstad. Lorelai is determined to use this opportunity to prove herself and make her wildest, most impossible dream come true to become a naturalist, able to travel freely to land she's only ever read. And so the expedition gets off to a harrowing start when its leader, Lorelai's beloved mentor, is murdered in her quarters aboard their ship. Um, and then there's some maddeningly beautiful girl, Sylvia Von Wolf, and she's now in charge of the expedition. And they work grudgingly together to uncover the truth and resist their growing feelings for one another. They discover that their professor has secrets of her own, secrets that make Lorelai question whether justice is worth pursuing or if this kingdom is worth saving at all. And number seven also has like sapphic characters, um, which I'm totally gonna be on board with. It is called Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. I'm a little bit further into this one. Um, and I realized doing some research last night that it is actually the first authorized retelling of The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. So um, it's been on my Kindle for a hot minute or two. I bought it some time ago, but it's horror, so perfect for October. So the description on this one, Holly Sherwin has been a struggling playwright for years, but now after receiving a grant to develop her play, The Witch of Edmonton, she may finally be close to her big break. All she needs is time and space to bring her vision to life. When she stumbles across Hill House on a weekend getaway upstate, she is immediately taken in by the ornate and crumbling Gothic mansion nearly hidden outside a remote village. It's enormous, old, and ever so eerie, the perfect place to develop and rehearse her play. Despite her own hesitations, Holly's girlfriend, Nisa, agrees to join Holly in renting the house out for a month, and soon a troop of actors, each with ghosts of their own, arrive. Yet as I settle in, the house's peculiarities are made known. Strange creatures stalk the grounds, disturbing sounds echo throughout the halls, and time itself seems to shift. All too soon, Holly and her friends find themselves at odds. 
not just with one another, but with the house itself. It seems something has been waiting in Hill House all these years, and it no longer intends to walk alone. So, yeah. And I'm enjoying it so far. Like, I'm not super far in, but I'm enjoying it. So the next one is historical fiction, um, the postcard by Anne Burrest. And I've had this one on my Kindle and on my radar for even longer because it was on Modern Mrs. Darcy's Summer Reading Guide, I think in 2023, maybe 2022. And this is what it's about. It's set in January of 2003. Together with the usual holiday cards, an anonymous postcard is delivered to the Brest family home. On the front, a photo of the Opera Garnier in Paris. On the back, the name of Anne Brest's maternal grandparents, Ephraim and Emma, and their children, Noemi and Jacques, all killed at Auschwitz. 15 years after the postcard is delivered and the heroine of this novel, and this is a fictionalization, I think, of a true family story because Anne Burrest is also the author. Um, aided by her chain-smoking mother, family members, friends, associates, and a private detective, a graphologist, and many others, she embarks on a journey to discover the fate of the Rabinovich family. Their flight from Russia following the revolution, their return to Latvia, 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 Palestine and Paris. What emerges is a moving saga that shatters long-held certainties about Anne's family, her country, and herself. Hi, future Didi here. So, in my haste to record yesterday, I forgot number nine on the list, which is The Shape of Darkness by Laura Purcell. So I've read three of her other books, the first of which was The Silent Companions, which I think I read in a day, absolutely loved it. Even more than that was The Poison Thread, which actually has several other titles depending on what country you're in, but in the US it was published under The Poison Thread. And then she had The House of Whispers, which I didn't love as much, but I still enjoyed it enough to like, you know, anytime she has a new title out, I have my eyes wide open, like I need, I need to know. So this next one is The Shape of Darkness, and it is about Agnes, who is a silhouette cutter around the time that, I don't know what you really call a silhouette artist, around the time that photography has come into um, the popular, popular. And she does these silhouette portraits and um, the people she's doing silhouette portraits of keep getting murdered. And so she approaches a child medium or spiritualist I want to say this is set like in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when like the whole spirit medium thing was really like booming. And um, she approaches this medium to help her with solving the mystery of why these people are being murdered. So I'm already like a fraction of the way through this book and really enjoying it so far. But if you've read any of her previous books, you might really like this one. Um, I do like the whole spiritual medium um, component to it because it goes into kind of like what it was like to be a spiritual medium. A lot of times they were con artists, but our character Pearl, who is the child medium in the story, has like a legitimate gift. Moving right along to number nine, Morbidly Yours by Ivy Fairbanks. And this is another book that I got on NetGalley. It was released in the summer of 2023, which is strange because I just got it, I feel like not too long ago, but time also flies. Um, it falls into that spooky rom-com category. I think it involves a grave digger, but here's a little bit from the description. Callum Flannelly would rather dive into an open grave than take a stranger to dinner and a movie, but he can only inherit the family undertaking business and carry on their legacy under one condition. He must marry before his 35th birthday. So it's out of the mortuary and into the dating scene. Lark Thompson would rather get crushed by a falling anvil than stay next to a funeral home during her stay in Galway, Ireland. The vivacious American cartoon creator and animator came here to embrace life, not just to be reminded of losing her husband. So it is a um, male-female romance, does have that spooky vibe, and it's set in Ireland, um, which, you know, I have some history there that we're not gonna get into. So Frida, I think is how you say her name, McFadden, is one of those authors that seems to be blowing up all over the internet. Um, I feel like she's kind of the Colleen Hoover of thrillers, but I have yet to read anything by her. Um, so I put this next one on my list because I've had it on my Kindle for a while. I think it's from Kindle Unlimited, um, The Teacher. And I'm also a teacher, so that seems very appropriate to me. From the description, trust lesson number one. 
trust no one. Eve has a good life. She wakes up each day, kisses her husband, Nate, and heads off to teach math at the local high school. All is, is as it should be, except last year, Kaysom High was rocked by a scandal involving a student-teacher affair with one student, Addie, at its center. But Eve knows there's far more to these ugly rumors than meets the eye. Addie can't be trusted. She lies, she hurts people, she destroys lives. At least that's what everyone says. But nobody knows the real Addie. Nobody knows the secrets that could destroy her, and Addie will do anything to keep it quiet. So, there you have it. The Teacher by Freda McFadden, number 11. Oh man, already at number 11. So the final book on my list, number 12, um, it's last but not least. It's probably older than five years, but it's been out for a while, and I've, it's also been an acquisition I've had for a while. It's Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller, and from what I remember, before we dive into the description, what I remember, there is kind of like a love triangle um, with maybe some sapphic over or undertones, which again, is right up my alley. But um, it is probably gonna fit more into like the literary fiction genre. So from the Goodreads description, it says, from the attic of Linton's, a dilapidated English country mansion, Francis Jellicoe sees them. Kara first, dark and beautiful, then Peter striking and serious. The couple is spending the summer of 1969 in the rooms below hers while Francis is researching the architecture of the surrounding gardens. But she's distracted. Beneath a floorboard in her bathroom, she finds a peephole that gives her access to her neighbor's, did I say that word right? Neighbor's private lives. To Francis' surprise, Kara and Peter are keen to get to know her. It is the first occasion she has had anybody to call a friend. And before long, they are spending every day together eating lavish dinners, drinking bottle after bottle of wine, and smoking cigarettes until the ash piles up on the crumbling furniture. Francis is dazzled. But as the hot summer rolls lazily on, it becomes clear that not everything is right between Kara and Peter. The stories that Kara tells don't quite add up, and as Francis becomes increasingly entangled in the lives of the glamorous, hedonistic couple, the boundaries between truth and lies, right and wrong, begin to blur. Amid the decadence, a small crime brings on a bigger one, a crime so terrible that it will brand their lives together. For, no. It'll brand their lives forever, not together. Forever. So there you have it. I will put those titles in the description. 12 books I'm hoping to, if not fully read, at least get further into. I think I've started all of these, at least I'm at least a chapter in in each one. So thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you plan to read this, this October, what you're already reading since we're almost halfway through the month, and which of these titles sounds especially good to you. And I will be back hopefully with another booktube video in the next week, and I will see you next time. Bye!